cut uh, to uh, turn our balance staff there's uh, just one or two little points which might be of interest um, about the graver. Now as I said uh, previously that I like to uh, have all my gravers prepared, sharpened, ready uh, for the staff. Um, this is useful in a couple of ways. It means that uh, as you work along if the edge uh, goes off your graver you can uh, uh, quickly swap to another graver and those uh, sort of measurements you've got in your mind's eye uh, don't, uh, don't get lost while you uh, spend time uh, resharpening the graver and also it, uh, it, it speeds the work along generally because you're uh, less reluctant to uh, do something to the graver if you can, uh, you can just pick up another one you know you'll go on using it when the when the best has gone and uh, really you ought to be uh, you ought to just give it a, uh, a brighten up on the stone well a lot, lot is written about the way of sharpening of gravers but um, uh, rarely uh, uh, does anyone have the opportunity to uh, uh, to give it the sort of demonstration now I um, I find that um, uh, you know a lot of people uh, feel there's a bit of a mystery about it but there isn't really it's just practice but uh, with a uh, with an eye on one or two little points now um, what it really consists of is picking up the flat surface on the stone now you can you can use a jig uh, and uh, you can get it dead right but uh, really uh, if you're going to do it regularly or in, in, in any sort of professional way you need to develop the hand and eye skill uh, to be able to sharpen the graver without um, without recourse to a jig and um, it's quite simple once you uh, once you practice along the right lines if you uh, uh, in the first instance of course I, I've got a little um, uh, water bath um, Grind, uh, electric grindstone which uh, um, roughs out the graver down to the angle you want and uh, saves a lot of hard work off the, off the uh, motorized wheel onto a India, coarse India stone then onto the Arkansas stone it has to be a water bathed wheel if you're going to take any sort of metal off at all like that otherwise you draw the temper of the, well, of the graver um, now when you, when you come to uh, uh, try pick up the edge that you've produced on the uh, um, on, on the on the whetstone. Uh, you uh, uh, the, there are one or two little things that um, you know uh, little tricks you can adopt to help you in along that line. Now I've um, roughed this uh, graver out, and I've also uh, uh, been on the uh, on the India stone with it. So now we're coming to the Arkansas stone, and I think uh, this is the best uh, opportunity to uh, demonstrate. Uh, uh, just what I mean if you I've used a very large graver here I, I mean you wouldn't uh, this wouldn't be the sort of graver you'd use for a balanced staff but uh, it does help to uh, uh, demonstrate uh, just the the points I want to bring out if you uh, place the graver on the on the stone and you press gently you'll notice around the faces of the stone that the oil is expelled uh, and if you uh, if you just sort of adjust your angle very slightly you'll find that you can get it, reach a situation where the oil is expelled evenly around all the faces so when you've done that you've got it you, you, you just you just do that just rock it about just slightly and then if you lift it off you'll find you you've got a perfect diamond on the stone where the whole face has been in contact so all you need to do to pick up the grinding face that you want is just carefully position the graver on the stone watch the oil expelled and then a few quick rubs and uh, you know you're in business you can go around in circles if you like or you can go up and down I'm afraid I've done a lot more up and down on this stone than I should have done it's developed one or two uh, uh, what should we say uh, permanent grooves but um, it still works all right and um, you'll find that if you practice along those lines you'll have no difficulty producing a nice flat face on the graver just where you want it and uh, in the long run it'll save you a lot of time and uh, you'll get quite a bit of pleasure out of uh, being able to do that and the other thing is once you've got that nice flat face turn the graver over and just take off that uh, put a face on the back of the graver at a very very shallow angle more or less on the same plane as the shoulder or the back of the graver um, just to um, give it that little polish at the top you just just a couple of rubs that's all you need and 
bit of rag in the hand, just wipe it off. I find rag is better than paper towel. Paper towel is a bit unreliable. It, uh, I have on occasions dug the point of the graver into my hand doing that without thinking. Anyway, once you've done that, give the graver a little dab on a soft bit of wood. That's the underside of the bench. I suppose the bench eventually will fall down over the years. I must have jabbed it into the underside a lot of times. You can, if you wish, you know, just try the graver on your thumbnail, but once you've done all this and you can see you've got a nice uh, polished face on the back and the front, you, do, you won't find that necessary. Now, I um, also I keep my gravers in a plastic box with a bit of leather glued, on, uh, glued uh, at one end, so that you know you throw the graver in, and it gives it half a chance. You know, it doesn't uh, it doesn't take the tip straight off. I don't think it does it a lot of good, mine, but it does mean that uh, you know once you've got them all sharpened, if there's just a little job you want to do, you can pick a graver out of the box, and uh, you, you're pretty sure it, it's it's still got its tip. Well. Hope that's been of some use. Now we'll uh, move over and uh, get started on the staff proper.